Hey everybody, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete. I'm in an incredible place today. I'm really excited. I got up at one in the morning this morning and got with my man Steven and we drove together to Death Valley where Nevada, California, and Arizona kind of share a border. And we're at this hidden oasis in the desert that has a stream running through it and using the stream as the catalyst for growth, the family here has planted an orchard of date palm trees. And yes, I'm here at the China Date Ranch. We picked up a few date palm trees. We got to sample some of the most delicious and freshest dates I've ever eaten in my entire life. And the owner, Brian, who's a great guy, he toured us around the property, told us the history of the ranch. He let us sample some of their most gourmet dates and told us how they first began growing date palm trees here when his great aunt ate a date for the first time, loved it so much, she ordered a box of pits and a catalog, she planted the pits, and from those pits, they chose which varieties tasted best, looked the best, was best for landscaping, best for production, best for date bread and date smoothies and such, and now they propagate off those original date palms. An amazing story. And just look at the dates behind me in this section. So if you guys come here to the China Date Ranch, it's also very educational. They have some information on each date so you guys can learn about the variety you're eating or are gonna be planting. And so I hope that one day my urban farm in Tempe looks kind of like this. I mean, check this out. What Brian was telling us is that when they grow dates like this, they put the cloth around them to protect the dates from any kind of animals that might try to eat the dates, including uh, vegan human beings, because I don't want to eat too many of his dates. But they can take the pups off the mother trees and they can propagate those and plant those pups. They let the dates ripen. If you guys come over here and check it out, you'll see the dates ripening in different stages of maturity. And he said that when they take the pollen from a male palm tree, and they use it to pollinize the female palm tree, they exponentially increase their harvest. And so they go from producing about 30 or 40 pounds of fruit per tree to harvesting about 300 to 400 pounds of fruit per tree. And the key is, is that one of the male date palm trees can help to pollinize up to 50 female date palm trees. But when you let the air do it, they produce much less dates. So if you take the male pollen and you brush it against the newly opened female flowers, you'll increase your fruit production. And what Brian, the owner, was telling me as he gave me a really generous tour of the place here was that when you plant the new date palm tree, you want to use a combination of sand as well as he uses some potting mix, just some low-grade potting mix from a just a garden store or a nursery and he mixes the sand with the potting mix, maybe some native soil in there, and he makes a sandy mix that's well draining with mulch on top. He even said put mulch on top. So check this date palm out right here. And just, if you guys are gonna try to grow uh, date palm trees in your edible landscape, you know, I would mimic what you see here. I mean, look at the, the nice shape of the tree, how they have it, you know, branching perfectly. It's very symmetrical. Uh, the ratio of trunk to leaves. This is probably what you want to do at home. Uh, if you want to be a master, copy the masters until you're the master, you know what I mean? And so they have all the dates wrapped in bundles. And a few months ago, when the flowers first opened on these female date palm trees, they took the pollen from the male date palm trees and they brushed the pollen on the female flowers and that enabled them to to amplify and multiply their harvest. And so instead of about 30 or 40 pounds of dates per tree, they get 300 to 400 to 500 pounds of dates per tree. And so if you lift this guy up right here, you can see underneath, you guys can come in here close. These are a bunch of dates not ripe yet and they are yellow just like this. And if you're in the Phoenix area or Las Vegas area or California area, you'll see a lot of trees in the city that are not kept by tree companies, they look like this. Then usually a tree company comes by and cuts all these down and trims them. So if I was you, I would encourage your landscapers not to cut these and let them ripen so you can eat them.
And then this is another stage of growth. This one is not quite as mature as the other one. So you can see how there's different stages of maturity on the dates, even though they're on the same tree. I wanted to show you guys over here, if you guys pan over this way, this tree looks really impressive. I'm not even going to begin to tell you the varieties because you want to come out here and talk to Brian or any of the experts from the date ranch, the China date ranch and have them talk to you about the varieties because they know all about them. And if you guys look underneath here on this one, there are dates that are in different stages of ripeness. So the yellow ones are not quite ready. These ones look a little overripe, a little shriveled. And these ones look like they're in between half and half. See that? Half yellow, half ripe. These ones not ripe. These ones overripe, shriveled a little bit. And then these ones right here, just perfect. And Brian was good enough uh, about five minutes ago to give us a sample of this date. So I hope that Brian won't, won't uh, get mad at me for trying one more on camera. So I'm going to pluck this one date off. I'll gladly pay you for it if you want me to later. But that looks like a very juicy, humongous, perfect magazine centerfold style date. And let me describe the taste to you guys. I mean, this is literally the best date I've ever eaten in my entire life. I mean, literally. I used to like the Barhi dates the best. This one is warmed by the morning sun. It's creamy, it's juicy, and it tastes better than any caramel you've ever had in your life. And maybe I'll save the pit and plant it just like the great aunt of the China Date Ranch. And I mean, I literally could sit here and eat all these dates. I won't, but I could, because I love dates that much. Let's go check out some of the varieties they have up top, and then we'll uh, end this video for today. So follow me. If you guys check this out, this is the original site of the original trees that the great aunt of the China Date Ranch planted. And now they're very mature and they're looking fantastic. And you can tell they've been here for many, many decades. So if you guys plant your date palms now and you live long enough, you can see them mature to this size. So we're gonna cut now to my house in Tempe and I'm gonna show you guys the date palm trees I just picked up here from the China Date Ranch. We're gonna plant them right in front of you guys and show you not only where I'm planting them, but how I'm planting them, the soil I'm planting them in, how I'm gonna water them, and I'll give you guys progress reports of the date trees as they grow bigger and bigger. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll get those updates. Let's go to Tempe right now. We're back in Tempe, Arizona. We made it back safely in record-breaking time. I had an excellent experience at the China Date Ranch and I will definitely go back again. I think it was fantastic to eat the dates, to see the gift shop, to take a tour of the date trees, and to see the incredible animal life and landscape that surrounds that precious piece of land out there that's very close to Death Valley. And so I took the date palm trees when I got home and I laid them in the river here, which this river used to be a thriving vegetative oasis garden, but you guys saw my video from a few days ago that my mesquite tree fell on all this, it broke the bridge, it killed most of the yerba manza and lufa in the river, but some survived. And so I figured I'm repairing the river, doing a lot of home projects, you guys are getting me raw and unfiltered today. And so I laid the date palms in the river because that's what Brian at the China Date Ranch did at his ranch. He was he had these date palm trees laying in their river. So I'm doing the same thing and I'm laying them in the river so that the roots stay alive and healthy while I dig the holes for these guys which are going to be behind you. And then when I plant them, they'll hopefully have some fish poop nutrients and really good uh, healthy roots to jumpstart them and have them grow from the very first moment they're in the hole. And so I normally like to have my yard looking really nice for you guys, but I am doing so much cleanup now from all the monsoons we've had. And the tree that fell was literally, I mean, it was a taller than 50 foot tall mesquite tree. It's completely dead and down now. We've mulched and wood chipped all of it. And so I'm gonna show you guys where these date palms are gonna go, but don't judge my yard because it is in disarray right now. And we're doing complete uh, damage control. So we're gonna go over here. Now that this mesquite is down and we have turned him into wood chips, we now have a huge microclimate that's full of 
an excess amount of sun, where before this was completely in the shade all day long. And so I'm gonna put six of these date palms that I got from the China Date Ranch in my landscape. I'm gonna put one date palm here, in this spot right here, let it grow up above the fence here. I'm gonna put one date palm next to him here and have him grow up and I have a bubbler already ready to irrigate them. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna put one date palm in this area so that he's a partner for the Chico Sapote I got from Seamus O'Leary. And then we're gonna have a new gate here so that way there's room to walk between two date palms and get into the trash alley. That'll be a nice little walk through the date palm king and queen as we go and take the trash out. And then I'm gonna put uh, a couple over here, so join me. I'm gonna put one date palm here, and the reason is because this is a grove of apple and pear trees and a mulberry bush. And I want the date palm to go in this place that he grows up, and as the sun is moving across the sky where I'm pointing now, this date palm will hopefully in a year or two, maybe two or three years, give some shade to these apple trees in the heat of the summertime. So we're doing some companion planting in this area. And then over here is the last two date palms. We're gonna put one here where this bubbler is and one here where this bubbler is so that these two spots will be the two date palms that will be closest together. We'll probably space them about six to eight feet apart. So we're pushing the, the separation of the date palm trees, but I think it'll be okay because I'm gonna give them really healthy soil. And they can grow up like the twin towers together and push themselves into the sky and help to shade out a little bit of my garden from the summer heat. That's the plan. I'm gonna get to digging the holes. The beauty about these three holes is that they already had trees before that didn't make it. And so now the ground is alive, full of microbes. I'm gonna dig out the mulch and the hole and then backfill the special date palm tree mix that Brian told me to use on date palms. I'm going to listen to his advice exactly, but then I'm going to add a couple of things to try to supercharge these guys and have the tastiest dates in all of Arizona. This is gonna be interesting because these two holes had trees and really good soil before this point, so they're gonna be really easy to dig. I'm gonna save the soil on the side and amend the soil to be perfect for these date palm trees. The cool thing is, is that the soil in this area will already be alive because it's been watered. It's got mycorrhiza in it, it's got mycelium in it, it's got microbials in it, it's got active compost and mulch and sand and native soil and composted wood chips and things like that. So it's got a lot of healthy stuff in it. So we all have trees that die sometimes. And so when we use the hole again, we want to scrape all the mulch away and save it on the side. So I'm going to scrape it away and just save it over here. And here's the old root stock of the old tree. And now when I pull this guy out of here, you can see how nice that soil was and this guy just didn't make it. Part of the reason was me. Actually, all the reason was me. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that guy to the side. We'll probably use him for some kind of mulch later. And then I'm gonna dig out all this nice soil and put it in my wheelbarrow. Okay, my hole is dug out. I think that the depth is perfect. I even have a little bit of a raised berm around the edges so that the water will stay in the root zone of the date palm. And Brian from the China Date Ranch, he was really the man. He was so knowledgeable about dates. He was like the date connoisseur, not only of the, how the dates taste, but also how to plant them, how to propagate them, everything about dates. And he told me a few things. One, he said that they actually water their date palm trees twice a week, especially in the summertime. They might back it off in the winter. And even though they're established, still twice a week, and they get all their water from their stream that's local there at the ranch. Number two, he said to make the soil a combination of sand 
and then go to the store and buy some, just some low grade compost and mix it together, maybe with a little bit of native soil in there and make it a very sandy mix because they want to have that drainage. And so I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna try to do what he said. And what I've got in bucket number one is a bucket full of sand. And this bucket is just full of sand here and uh, maybe a little bit of, a little bit of compost and mulch, but it's just 99% sand. So I'm gonna pour that in there, just like that. And then I've got the special bag of Seamus O'Leary mix, which this is lava sand with some lava rock and a little bit of compost and mulch. So it's a very sandy soil, but it's the lava sand, really good for the microbes. So we're gonna throw some of that Seamus O'Leary lava sand mix in there. And then combined with that, we've got some compost here that I use in all my raised beds and planting trees like this that need some compost and some active microbes. And so we're gonna put some of that compost in there. And then I've got my wheelbarrow full of the soil that I dug out of the hole. And this wheelbarrow is full of some native soil, some sand, some worm castings, as well as a little bit of compost. And some of the azomite rock minerals. So we're gonna backfill some of that in there. Then I'm gonna take my bag of the azomite rock dust minerals. And this is over 70 different rock minerals and trace elements. And this is a shout out to my friend John Kohler with growing your greens because he's a freak when it comes to the azomite and the rock dust minerals and I'm hoping that I can grow date palms that'll fruit with rock dust minerals and then let John Kohler, my friend, try them out and hopefully he'll say, Jake, these are the sweetest and most delicious dates I've ever tasted. So we're gonna dig all this together, mix it up, and if you guys get in here nice and close, I'll show you what the mixed version of this soil looks like now. So. It's not, I don't know if the camera can pick it up exactly how it looks in real life. It's not too dark, it's just dark enough and it's got a mixture of native clay with sand. And so I know this soil is gonna have nutrients in it. It's also going to drain very well and breathe and allow the roots to take hold, but also the roots will have enough space to grow and expand and become mature. So now let's go get our first date palm and see how he goes in this hole. In this hole here, we're gonna put the date palm that they call the China Ranch Black. We're gonna put the black here, we're gonna put the China Ranch Gold there, and the China Ranch Gold there, and have the gold, black, and gold make a Oreo cookie sandwich of sorts with the black in the middle and the golds on the outside. Let's go get our victim. So you guys can see right here, it says black, and FB, which doesn't mean iron, it means female. So black female. I'm gonna grab this guy carefully because these date palms have really vicious thorns on them. Let that water kind of run out there and now we're gonna bring him over and put him in the hole. And so here's the last two important steps of this process that Brian told me was Number one, you wanna make sure to plant the soil up to the fattest part of the trunk here. So where the trunk becomes kind of bulbous and kind of fat right here in the middle, bring the soil level up to the fat part. So I think this is a little too low still. So I'm gonna kind of move some dirt in there like this and that will bring it a few inches higher. And now in my opinion, that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna stand them straight like this and then kind of get back and look and make sure that he looks pretty good. And I think I might turn him a little bit like that. And that looks pretty good to me. So I think that that's gonna be a winner. And I'm gonna set him right in that hole just like that. And the second step I wanna to do to end this thing is grab the special bag. And in this bag, I have some micro Ryza and the mycorrhiza is that active microbe mycelium that's gonna help to create that interconnected web of microbes beneath the soil and allow the tree to take nutrients from all over the place. So we're gonna sprinkle this guy in there, kind of along the root ball next to where the roots are gonna be and that will really supercharge the microbe explosion in this guy. And then we're gonna backfill our good soil mixture into the hole and 
allow this guy to stand on his own. Then we're gonna water him thoroughly. And then we're going to put mulch on top. I got him in the hole, he looks so happy. We're gonna gently rake over some of our mulch on top. That way he has a, a good layer of mulch including composted wood chips, hay, leaves, and general yard clipping debris. And then the last thing we're gonna do after the mulch is on top, just like that, we're gonna water them. And I've got my water here, I'll spray the mulch down to kind of make it wet. I'm gonna spray the, the lovely date palm off here, he looks beautiful. And dates are one of my favorite foods on the planet. I can't wait to have my own fresh dates with such an amazing story behind them as the one that I just had at the China Date Ranch. I love my experience there. Thank you to Brian for being so courteous and a great host and for growing such amazing trees that we can all enjoy. And if you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'm gonna be very excited to bring you updates of how this date grows, matures, flowers, and then fruits for the first time and then I will definitely eat the dates right in front of you. Thanks for watching my video and thanks for watching all the videos at our channel here, the Vegan Athlete YouTube channel. I really encourage you guys, if you wanna grow as a gardener and learn about date palm trees, to head over and see my friends at the China Date Ranch. It's a long drive, but well worth it in a beautiful area of the country. And as always, don't forget that if you wanna be sustainable and a positive member of the planet, go vegan and grow your food at home like delicious dates. I'll see you guys next time.